Hey guys, it's Patrick here from PowerCurve. Today we've got a ZD30 in. I thought it was a good opportunity to have a chat. We get a lot of calls about people asking what sort of gains they're going to expect from their tune. And I think a lot of people don't really understand how to process that information when we relate back to them. So hopefully this little video will help demonstrate what we try and do here rather than just get a huge horsepower figure. It's more about the drivability of the vehicle and, and what you're going to experience when you drive home. So. As of late, we've probably done three now that have actually lost horsepower after a tune. Uh, they've been in with a chip and we've tuned it and it's lost top end horsepower, only about three horsepower, but it doesn't look good on the dyno sheet, but the drivability is so much better and the customers are more happy because of the following sort of reasons, I guess. So if you have a look at this dyno sheet here, this is of this car, it's a 2006 model, it's a manual. So the readings are quite accurate in relation to RPM at the bottom of the scale across here. So this vehicle came in, it originally had a boost style actuator. So it had been modified. So here's the factory one here. You can see on the diaphragm it actually had a split and around here it was starting to split as well. So the customer had complained ever since this had happened um, that he'd had lazy boost response and he kept going into limp mode. And you can see that here in the red line. So at about 3,400 revs, it just hit limp mode and stopped. So we did four or five runs continuous about that. And we could straight away see what was going on. So if we just have a look at the boost readings in different between the vacuum control and the boost control. So you can see in the red line here, we've got a, just a little bit over 15 pounds, so probably 16 pound, and we've reached full boost at 2400 revs. So we've reverted back to an original vacuum control and a HPD boost controller. Um, we've got that up to 20 PSI just after 2000 RPM, which is across here, and it holds that nearly all the way through. They're only a little turbo, so they do run out a little bit up the top. But the drivability of that really changes and you can see that here. So at around 2000 RPM, we've got 150 Newton meters of torque and about 45 horsepower. So after a tune, a bit of a tickle up with the ECU, which is going really well for us lately. Um, we've got just under 300, so about 270 say, and probably 80 horsepower. So we've nearly doubled both our power and torque at that driving point where you drive every day. But if you have a look here, you know, let's assume that this line would keep following on. We might have sort of ended up with 95 at the worst case. So, you know, we may have picked up 15 horsepower at the end of the line where you never drive. Um, you know, you're very rarely at 4,000 RPM with your foot flat to the floor towing a caravan. You normally drive around town trying to overtake at around the two and a half grand mark, two to two and a half grand. So just a little bit of feedback for people, I suppose, to understand uh, a little bit about what we do. Uh, and if we flick over to our air fuel ratio, you can see that, um, you know, nothing extravagant there. We're all pretty much above 20 to one the whole way along. Starts at 18s, nearly factory. Um, these things are always a bit wiggly and wavy. It's a bit hard to smooth them out. It's just how they are. Very heavily dependent on boost and airflow. So another good thing to keep in mind is keep your airflow meter clean and regular servicing. So hopefully that's a bit of uh, information and feedback for everyone and um, look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much.